Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check a beginner friendly kit by Beta FPV, which might be a good option in case you would like to start your way in flying FPV drones. In this video, I'm going to go over the contents of the kit, explain to you about the three main components, which are the goggles, drone and radio controller, and finally give you my feedback after testing out this kit for the last couple of weeks. First of all, in terms of packaging, the Beta FPV kit comes inside a high quality carrying case, which is in my opinion very useful and will enable you to carry and protect the included equipment. On the bottom side of the case, you can find cutouts for placing the goggles, drone and radio controller. And on the top side, you can find a pocket where you can store all the included accessories. In addition to the FPV goggles, radio controller and drone, inside the case, you can also find two simple antennas with an RPSMA connector a spare set of Gemfan 31mm tri-bladed propellers, a USB to micro USB cable for charging the internal battery of the FPV goggles, a propeller extractor tool, and in case you are getting the Flymo package, you are going to get 6 batteries along with a 6-way charger, and if you are going to get the regular package, you are going to get 2 batteries and this USB charger. You should note that unfortunately the USB charger, which also double acts as a battery tester and enables you to charge two 1S batteries simultaneously using a USB port, is not included with the Flymo package. And the 6-way charger, which is included with it, can only be powered using 3 or 4S batteries with an XT60 connector. So what I recommend to do in case you don't have a power supply or bigger batteries is to get the normal version and simply purchase extra batteries separately. Now after this quick introduction, let's go over the three main components which you can find inside the kit, starting with the radio controller. The Beta FPV Lite Radio 2 is probably one of the best, if not the best, budget-friendly gamepad style radio controller that you can currently get. It supports both FRSky D8 and D16 protocols and features high quality and precise gimbals. Inside its battery bay, you can find an included 350mAh 2S battery, which should last you for about an hour of continuous usage. Charging the battery is done using the micro USB port, which is located on the bottom of the radio controller, which is also used for configuring the radio controller and using it for flight simulators. In addition, it features a trainer port and supports 8 channels. I have a separate review about this radio controller where I also test its range, so if you'd like to learn more about it and also see how switching between the available protocols and binding a radio receiver is done, check out my review over here. Now moving on to the FPV goggles. The Beta FPV VR01 feature a single 4.8 inch LCD screen with a resolution of 800 by 480 pixels, an internal 5.8 GHz dual antenna video receiver that supports 40 channels, an internal 2000 mAh 1S lithium ion battery that should last you for about 2 hours. Charging the battery is done using this micro USB port, and the full charge cycle should take you between 2 to 3 hours. In addition, the goggles feature an auto search function and a built in DVR that supports both playback and recording. The DVR is going to be saved to a micro SD card, which you are going to need to insert to this micro SD card slot, and the maximum size of supported micro SD card is 32GB. So basically, these are very simple and basic goggles, which separately cost about $50, so don't expect fetch up quality. I think that they might be okay for beginners, and I also think that they are quite comfortable. However, their main downsides are that, in my opinion, they cause a little bit of a night nice strain, which is of course something personal, so I wasn't able to use these goggles for a long period of time, and they also have a serious problem with the built-in DVR, so as you can see in the following flight footage, where I recorded the screens of the goggles externally using a GoPro camera, the recording was pretty good, however, the DVR was very messy, and just for a comparison purpose, I also added the DVR of the Fetchuck HDO2, which I used in order to fly the quadcopter. Last but certainly not least is the Meteor 65 quadcopter, which I have previously reviewed. Unlike the version that I've tested, however, this version is equipped with the Beta FPV 1S Lite all in one flight controller that comes pre flashed with silverware firmware, so you won't be able to find a micro USB plug on the flight controller and configuring it is done solely using the radio controller and OSD. You should note that out of the box everything is pre-configured for you and the radio controller is bound with the onboard radio receiver. In addition, by default, the built-in FRSky D8 compatible onboard radio receiver is in use. Entering bind mode is done while pressing the bind button and powering the quadcopter together and in case you would like to add an external radio receiver, you can switch between DSMX and SBUS modes 
by pressing the FC button while powering on the quadcopter. In terms of specs, in addition to the all-in-one flight controller that features an integrated 5A 4-in-1 ESC, the Meteor 65 Lite features 0802 19,500 kV motors, which will provide you with plenty of power. It is using the Beta FPV M01 all-in-one camera combo, which is based on a 600 TV line CMOS camera and a 40 channels 25 mW video transmitter that supports smart audio. In addition, it is using a BT 2.0 battery connector and features a very flexible and durable frame and a robust canopy. As for its weight, without a battery, the Meteor 65 Lite weighs 22 grams and including the included 300mAh 1S LHV battery that should provide you with between 2 to 2.5 minutes of flight time, the total weight is 30 grams. In order to enter the flight controller configuration menu, just like on Betaflight, put the throttle at mid position, yo all the way to the left and pitch forward. Then using the pitch and roll stick, you'll be able to adjust the PID tuning, adjust the direction of the motors, make sure that all the sticks and switches are working properly, configure the frequency of the BTX and pay attention that even though you can set the output power to 200 milliwatts, it will be still set to 25 milliwatts, adjust the OSD display elements, adjust the rates and switch between different profiles and finally save your settings. As for setting the flight mode, by flipping switch C you'll be able to enter turtle mode and then flip over the quadcopter in case of a crash. Switch B toggles between acro and horizon. Switch A arms the quadcopter. And on horizon mode, flipping switch C will enter race A mode, which is a combination of acro and horizon. In addition, on your FPV feed you'll be able to monitor the flight mode, the flight time, the battery voltage, and the receiver mode, which currently indicates internal SBUS, which means that the internal SBUS receiver is in use. Overall, after testing it out for quite a while now, I can tell you that I definitely recommend this set to a beginner who's looking to enter the hobby and do not want to mess with beta flight configuration. However, keep in mind that you are paying a premium price for getting all the parts together, and eventually, if you are going to stick around, you will need to learn how to use beta flight which is not that complicated after all. In addition, in case you are certain that you are going to stick around in this hobby, I recommend to get only the drone or maybe even the ready controller on their own and get a better set of FPV goggles. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flat footage and I hope that it was informative enough and provided you with enough information to make up your mind whether you like to get it or not. In case you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.